What's going on guys? We are gonna do a skid plate install today and I'm excited. I'm gonna do the ADF 316 inch skid plate. I'm gonna put it on the 2006 Subaru Forester. So this will be almost the same for 2003 to 2008 Subaru Foresters. You may experience a slight variation in what you're gonna see based on whether or not you have the turbocharged XT version or if you have a naturally aspirated 2.5 like I do. And then if you have a 2006 to 2008 versus a 2003 to 2005, you'll also have a slightly different exhaust manifold. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's gonna look a little bit different, but the process should be effectively the same. And these skid plates are not gonna be too much different if at all. So let's go ahead, see what we got going on here. Let me grab the scale real quick and we'll see. Let's we'll see how heavy I am. Gosh, it's gonna be embarrassing, I'll tell you what. Oh dude, nice round number. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so this is a substantially thicker skid plate than what I've owned before. And uh, it looks like we came out to 11.8 pounds. So this is pretty sturdy. Uh, I mean, it's I'm trying to think of what to compare this to. You know, 3 16 isn't something that you will probably often measure out. It's pretty beefy. And I mean, I don't feel like I could really bend it or do anything to it. I would have to really be pretty aggressive to to bend it or break it but kind of let you see what the thing looks like it's got some different bends in it that I I think are pretty cool that follow the shape of the undercarriage of the car I do like completely flat skid plates I think those are cool but uh, I think this is also a cool idea one of the biggest features that I would point out on this skid plate that I like versus any of the other skid plates that are out there is how it comes up on the side like that. I never thought about this until I was talking to Patrick over there, but basically this adds additional uh, rigidity to the, to the skid plate. So, I mean, if you think about it, if you were to try and take this and fold it in half between these two points, you'd literally have to cave this in in order for you to actually fold the skid plate in this along this section. Uh, the other thing that I like is it just helps keep additional debris um, and you know different hazards from coming up into the engine compartment. So it adds a little something there. Obviously it's well vented, like very well vented. I like that a lot. And of course you've got the lip being uh, bent up here, which I like. The back is not bent up, which I think because of the way that this is going to sit, because it's got this first bend, I don't think not having that bent will do anything in terms of catching on stuff in reverse. Um, my primitive skid plate had an angled lip on the back to keep it from catching, you know, when you're backing up on the trails but it did not have this first pre-bend here. So I think this will actually work really, really well. Uh, the one big thing, it's not really a big thing, but it does add some time and some, you know, extra work to your installation. But your skid plate here is just the skid plate. There was no aluminum welding at all taking place when these were made. So that means that there's no aluminum spacers built into the plate. Instead, you have to do them by hand. Now there's a couple things that I wanna say about that. That's probably gonna add another three or four minutes to installation and then removal when you're doing your oil changes. But something that I like about that is these spacers are actually very robust. And I think that these will actually hold up better than anything that I have seen on a skid plate in the past. 
so I don't think I'm going to have to worry about them pushing and punching through the skid plate. And the other thing that I like is as you start to use the skid plate and you damage it and you maybe create some bending in the skid plate, the fact that these are not welded into place, uh, that could play in your favor so that you're not really, you know, because there's been times where I've had to take the hammer and pound the spacers down back into position on my other skid plate. And I don't think that's gonna be an issue here. So it's a it's a pro and a con depending on how you look at it. I think it's gonna be just fine and I'm really excited to see how this goes. Uh, so at that, at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and start installing it. I'm gonna let you know how much of a pain in the butt it is to install these washers by hand. If you're doing the same install, like I said, I'm gonna to have to just verify this when I get under there but on my other skid plates it's always been the larger spacers go in the front and then the shorter ones go in the back and then you know you're gonna have that same situation with the hardware uh, let's see here you're gonna have two different types of hardware now I think this will be pretty self-explanatory but let me just take a peek here okay so you got a short one and a long one obviously you'll pair pair each one with longer and shorter spacers now, when you are installing the hardware, skid plate will be sandwiched in between the spacer. You'll take your bolt and your washer, and that's how you're gonna wanna do it. I, I mean, this is super elementary stuff, but we all started somewhere, right? Grade 10 bolts, solid washers, about as good of quality as you can go with, with bolts for automotive stuff. You really don't wanna go below eight and so eight and above is good obviously here we got 10 so we're set and these are going to treat us well i'm going to go ahead and climb under the car and see what happens i'm going to do an oil change on this vehicle because it's due so i'm going to do that real fast but then after that's finished i'm going to go ahead and install the skid plate on the car and see how she does okay so we're about to put this skid plate in real quick now one thing to keep in mind you don't want to over tighten these uh, these spacers are pretty heavy duty but you know it's not a good idea to just wrench down really hard on aluminum now this is 3 16 inch so i'm going to probably take a decent amount of torque but typically what i do i just snug them and then give them maybe a quarter turn um, just kind of use your best judgment on that but anyways i'm going to go ahead get under the car and try this this is actually going to be my first time installing this i haven't done this yet so we'll see how it turns out hopefully it works good <laughs> and then after we're done with it i'll share any tips with you that i find along the way Got the first two bolts in the front. And so what I was doing is I just would put the spacer on top of the skid plate 
and then I would just prep the washer and the and the bolt and before I actually put the plate up into position I had already pushed the bolt up through the spacer to kind of hold the spacer in place and if you can kind of get your head under there and sort of see what's going on and make sure that you're lining up the holes correctly that's great so let me show you the back so we're gonna have these two bolts right here these are gonna kind of just lock in again it's like right in front of the transmission but it's pretty simple so now that I've got them in here I'm gonna just grab something to tighten them down with okay looks like we got a 13 millimeter that's that's the size we need here so I'm gonna go ahead give this a quick zip I'm gonna turn I just have this on a on an old drill I'm gonna turn the power way down because I don't want to overdo it okay let's go ahead I'm gonna snug them down by hand so once they're snug let's go ahead and give them yeah I'm gonna say like Ooh. yeah quarter turn there we go Okay, so after you tighten everything down by hand, uh, you'll just recheck all your bolts. But that's it. This is this is it, dude. This thing is solid. Now check this out. I just want to show you what this looks like on the vehicle. So I really like how this comes up and just really deters any branches or debris from getting up right in there where the exhaust manifold comes down. I mean, if you smack something into that exhaust manifold hard enough, uh, I believe your, yeah, one of your catalytic converters is, I believe right there. Let me see, let's take a peek here. Yeah, that's, a, that's an expensive catalytic converter right there. And if you were to hit that hard enough, you could create some problems for yourself. Then over on this side, comes right up, fits well. Look, dude, I have done some really bad things to this car. Look at this. This is stupid. Man, this poor car. The other thing I'll say is I didn't put the car on jack stands. At first, I just went under it because the car is lifted two inches. But I quickly realized like I actually needed to be pretty pretty far underneath the vehicle in order to get the back plate, you know, the back of the plate um, seated correctly. So make sure you either drive it up on ramps or lift it up with a jack and some jack stands. Always use jack stands. Don't don't gamble with your life. You can gamble with your money, but don't gamble with your life. Actually, don't gamble with your money either. I don't I don't play either of those games. Um, let me think here. If you're doing this for the first time, you may want to chase the threads with the bolts. So you'll want to find the bolt holes and you can kind of put the plate up into position first and kind of look where the holes are at and see where you're going to have to put them. And you know, the reason I say that is because if those holes have never had a bolt in them, you're going to have a little bit of a hard time 
putting them up and threading them in by hand. Throw a little bit of anti-seize on one of the bolts, run them in and run them out real quick, you know, just to kind of make sure there's no uh, resistance and uh, to kind of get those threads cleared out because, you know, you're probably gonna have 10, 15, however many years of dirt, grime, sand, you know, any rust, but just make sure the threads are good before you get under here and start messing around and trying to fight the thing. And then I always recommend using anti-seize anyways. I would say use some gloves if you have gloves on hand. You definitely want to use gloves anytime you're working with anti-seize because it, it's hard to get off your hands. And I've heard that there are some people that have allergic reactions and it's really not healthy for you to be in contact with that stuff a lot. Um, I've heard of people getting like chemical burns from it and stuff. That's never happened to me, but I guess I've just been lucky. Uh, but yeah, wear gloves, not just because, you know, of any potential chemical stuff, but I will say that anytime you're working with aluminum, uh, the edges are gonna be sharp. It just is what it is. What you could do if you have some sandpaper it wouldn't be a bad idea to go around the edges of your skid plate just because this is freshly cut, freshly machined aluminum. And, you know, if you get up under there and you bang it with a knuckle or something like that, you run the risk of cutting your hand and it just is what it is. So if you've got like, I don't know, you could maybe do like a, like a 220 grit would probably zip through that pretty quick. Um, or you could do that at your next oil change, whatever you want to do. Just just something to consider, but it is a little bit sharp. So consider that, keep it in mind. Uh, but it's a pretty straightforward process. Just, you know, I was just winging it real quick. I got it in with within like 10 minutes and that included me getting up back out from under the car, lifting it up with the jack and then putting a jack stand under it. So I think it should be an easy job for most people to do. I'm really not that good with tools and I'm not even very smart <laughs> to put it politely. So I think the rest of you guys will be set and good to go. I'm really excited to not have uh, skid plate vibrations anymore because my last skid plate, I just, man, I had it for almost five years and I banged that thing into so many rocks, so many boulders, so many stumps like you would not believe some of the stupid things i've driven this car through uh just really dumb stuff <laughs> so uh, yeah so it was just making the car vibrate because it was bent so much that it was pushing up against the like the oil pan and the exhaust and transmitting all that vibration up into the cabin i could feel it throughout the whole car so it'd be nice to have that not be a thing anymore and uh, now that I've upgraded to the 316s, it'll be a lot nicer than the eighth inch, which the eighth inch was fine when I bought it. It was great. I didn't really know how crazy I was gonna be with this car, uh, but looking back on it, a couple extra bucks it would have cost me, I think would have been worth it. But that's all that I got to say about this skid plate install. If you have any questions, like I said, hit the comments. <laughs> Talk to you soon.